What up guys and welcome back to Thomas Reacts here on the 360 Experience with myself Thomas Mabasso. Today I want us to look at one topic that has divided the South Africans for such a long time. I'm talking about land expropriation without a compensation. You know that this policy, it's EFF's number one policy, it's one issue that the EFF has been campaigning with as we go to 2024 elections. We also know that for years the EFF has been, has been accusing the ANC of failing to expropriate land without compensation in South Africa and distributing the land amongst the poor South Africans. So guys, today in South Africa, we have two political parties, the ANC and the EFF, and both of these guys are in favor of land expropriation without compensation, but it seems like they cannot agree on how this policy should be rolled out because the ANC says that the land must belong to the people and the EFF says that the land must belong to the state so that the state can distribute the land. So guys, what are your thoughts, man? Do you think that land expropriation without compensation will actually benefit South Africans or do you think that land expropriation without compensation will actually hurt the South Africans? So what are your thoughts? Question. I, I have a slightly different question because we're not moving forward from this. Right. What are the top three policy priorities for the EFF? And explain it to me like I'm an 18 year old. <laughs> First time voter. <laughs> okay. The first one is expropriation of South African land without compensation for equal redistribution. And then the second what one... What does that mean? If I'm an 18-year-old, okay. We, what does that mean? Okay, we want to make sure that the state owns the land. So that because they've run everything else so well. No, no, no. But you see, you're, you're, <laughs> no, that's the ANC <laughs> state. So don't, don't okay, say okay. that. I'm not getting distracted. Carry on. Yes, carry on. on. It's on. owned by the ANC. Mm. So everything that people speak about, they speak about the ANC mm. and not mm. us. So the first thing that we want, we want expropriation of land. The 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 state must be the custodian. Everyone's what land, does that mean? Everyone's land will be taken does away mean, and then redistributed. Yeah. So what does that mean? Does that mean nobody owns a house? Nobody owns their land? It is all owned by the country? Yeah, how and do the we do country that, practically? via the EFF decide who gets to do it. You apply, you make an application, no, I, and then is you that say... Is that what it means? Yes. First answer yes. my question with the yes so or no. So this is what's going to happen. Now the land is... In the custodian of the state right but guys before we get to the part where the land is now in the hands of the state i would like to know what is the process going to be like of actually acquiring that land are we going to use the military to acquire the, those properties or are we going to use the courts or like what 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 is the process going to be like i would actually like to know man because it is very interesting because these guys I, I hear them talk about land expropriation without compensation, but I don't hear how they are going to acquire that land they are talking about. So what is the process going to be like? Right. So all those people who paid for their properties or who have most of their wealth in their properties, it's all gone. Let me explain, Karen. Mm. Now, I am, for example, we have a lot of land that is just sitting around that's not doing anything. You have people who will tell you, I'm having a farm farm don't don't and then when you go there you find that there's only one ostrich there they are literally there's land there is a lot of things that we could use building industries within this country okay, but, but we cannot do it on the basis that we don't have land okay but people but you're don't talking, have a place you're to talking stay. about the leftover land the, what about pumi's house and my house and jamie's house no, but imagine are, imagine we own what happens to that because you've expropriated everything what happens to the existing value of the economy and especially what happens if the bank is owed more than the property's worth, does the EFF and the state then take on the debt as well? What happens? You know, Garrett, what has happened is that when we started or when they, when we begin to start about the expropriation uh, bill, what happened was that you, you, you saw how the land was just, the prices just went very high, like in South Africa. All of a sudden, where you know people were the people who owns the land in this country started even rebonding those, uh, taking money against those, so that they can make sure that the situation becomes very difficult in terms but when the time comes for let's us. Let's just to go back to, to expropriate. How is expropriation so, going to work? I think this is because yeah, like, we've never had this explained to us properly. This, and this and, is why I insist. 
Uh, and guys, when this whole thing of land expropriation happens, are uh, people's properties going to be confiscated? Even the, the, the private properties, are they going to be taken? I think that is the question that Gareth Cliff is trying to understand it, that what about my property? What about my house? What is going to happen with, 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 with that land? Is that land going to belong to the state? Are they, uh, is the state going to now tell me that you are now, you are now my, my, my tenant? I think that is the question that Gareth Cliff is trying to understand, that what about people's houses? Is the state going to take that also? Guys, if you are an EFF member or if you are an EFF supporter, please please clarify this whole thing so that we can understand where this land expropriation is going because we don't want people to, to, to vote in 2024, voting for things that they don't understand. So can you try to make it clear that are they going to take people's properties? Are they going to take people's private homes? That you explain it to me as you would to a new voter because these are the people you want to give you the mandate. So what I want to understand is who gets what and who is in charge of making sure that that happens. Okay, so the EFF approach on the land expropriation without compensation is that all the land should be transferred to the ownership and custodianship of the state, right? With how it was done with the minerals um, and petroleum resource where everything was transferred to the state. If you need to go and apply for mine, you go to the to the state and you apply for it and then but that's they fine with sure the, that but, they give but, it to that's fine with the mine, but are we going to empty people from their houses, put them in the CBD, which is crap, <laughs> and then decide by this application process who gets to go back into their houses. I mean, why would anyone tolerate that? Yeah. The poor or the rich? Why would anyone yeah. put up with that? Yeah. What's what's the upshot? So now, now, even if this could possibly work, and I know you can't explain a way of it for it to work because there's just no way. Mm. If it did in your dream scenario, the EFF has this fantasy world where this could happen. Now you've distributed the land equally to everybody. What now? Okay. So, so they don't own it, so there's no reason for that because the state owns it. Okay, so state custodianship, right, of the land, it means that those who currently occupy the land should apply for licenses and continue using the land and should clearly state in the application of what they want to do with the land. Like, for example, you will be able to... It's just that Gareth wants to simplify this. But I feel like you're not answering the question of people's private properties, man. I feel like you're not answering the question of what about my house? What about my house? Am I going to, to, to be put out of my house and, and apply so that I can go back to my house? Is, is, is that is, Because I feel like that is the question. I feel like that is the question. Yes, we know that when people want to apply to, to, to do farming, when people want to apply to have land, to, to open businesses and everything, the state will be there to help people to make sure that, okay, if you want to apply for these things, this is how the state can help you. But right now we are talking about people's homes. Are people going to be put out of their homes? What is the process going to be like? And I feel like you're not answering that, man. This thing to a house. We're not speaking about but your most house. Most people no. live. Most so people do not live in rural I'm areas. I'm not asking you to, farm. to simplify it to a house. Mm. I just want it, like Jamie said earlier, that it confuses the electorate, mm. right? So what we are talking about, and that's why I specifically said explain it like you would to an 18 year old mm. right is what i would like to understand is what it is that you stand for so when you say land there are many people in this country who live in rural areas who will leave the land and live in them cuckoo just like <coughs> johannesburg because that land to them does not offer opportunity or value they would rather come to joburg and look for a job so, and for me, this is one of the reasons why the EFF struggles to get voters outside of metropolitan areas, right? Because we don't understand what it is that you are talking about. Okay. But, okay, so we're not going to move from this. You, you are unable to explain it to mm. us, and I, and I accept that. What is your second priority? But I've explained it, but it's okay. Well, that's all right. Yeah, but we don't understand what you're chosen, saying. We've chosen so to move on. So what's the, what's the second one? We want to nationalize the nationalization of mines, banks, and other strategic sectors of the economy. So that is 
seriously critical because we live in the world where we do and guys do you think that this lady man has represented the EFF well I feel like she didn't represent the EFF well especially when it comes to something that they care about so much this whole thing of land she just accepted that she she cannot explain the details you know what this reminds me of man it reminds me of that interview that was done by Susan Pofu when he was talking with Gatin McKenzie and you remember Gatin McKenzie saying that you know the patriotic alliance is going to deport all the the, the illegal immigrants in South Africa and Susan Pofu was like how are you going to do that in details how are you going to do that and Gatin McKenzie man was biting his tongue he couldn't answer but he just knows that he wants to deport all the illegal immigrants in South Africa but when it comes to the processes, the details, he cannot explain how the Patriotic Alliance is going to do that. I mean, at one point, he was talking about citizens' arrest. Can you imagine how many people will be killed? He was talking about uh, banishing the constitution or what, or, or something, or, or, or something radical like that. And 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 at that point, when it came to, it, it really came to me that, you know, politicians they like to talk about these policies, these policies. But they don't like to explain how they are going to, 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 to implement these policies. It's fun for them to say that we want to expropriate land without compensation. But right now she's failing to, to, to explain what is it exactly that this policy of the EFF means. She's failing to explain that. Because right now they are asking her for details. They are not asking her for rhetoric. For rhetoric, it's, it's easy to say that we are going to expropriate all the land. We are going to make sure that people who want to start their own businesses, the state will be there to, to, to help them and everything fine. But when it comes to the details of how are you going to do this, she's failing to explain how the, the, the EFF is going to, to, to acquire this land. She's failing to explain how the EFF is going to, to, to work out this whole thing of land expropriation without compensation. I am not discrediting her or anything else. I feel like there's someone else within the EFF who can do a better, who can do a better job of explaining this complicated policy of land expropriation without compensation because she's failing right now. She's failing. She's not representing the party well. Because what it means to me is like this lady loves going around saying the EFF wants to expropriate land without compensation, but she cannot explain the details of it. She cannot. And she admits that I, I, I'm failing to explain what does land expropriation without compensation means. How is the EFF going to achieve that? And what is it exactly that the EFF is going to do with the policy? She's failing to explain that. In her own words, yes. And these are the dangers, man, we should look out for, man. As we go to 2024 elections, these are the dangers, man. We, we, you know, like, South Africans, man, we, we don't like to ask the details, man. We don't like to hear the details. People simply come and, 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 and tell us about these rhetorics, man. We're going to build a new infrastructure. We're going to create jobs. No one asked Ramaphosa in 2019, how are you going to create jobs in South Africa? But people just loved the thought of South Africa having a load of jobs. People fell in love with the thought. But they failed to discuss the details. And now in South Africa, we have the highest unemployment rate, I think, in the world. Because people never focused on the details. People just loved, like just fell in love with the thought. And I feel like this lady right here, she, she's one of those. She fell in love with the thought of land expropriation without compensation, without actually understanding what is it, what, what is land expropriation without compensation? What is the EFF going to do? She's failing to explain that. Are people's private properties going to be taken? Are people's homes going to be taken? Man, people live in rural lands, just like that lady said. People live in rural areas. And, th and, and these people, they leave the, 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 the rural areas to come to towns to look for, 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 for jobs. So how can you tell people that taking you guys back to farming and, and all of these things is going to benefit you in any way when people are leaving their rural areas where there's plenty of farming? She's, she's failing to explain that, man. This is the reason why I'm saying that I feel like in the EFF there's someone who can explain this thing better. But this lady has done a terrible job. We must be honest with her. It's a terrible job. These are the kind of people that you don't send to people like Gareth Cliff and Like, you don't. You don't. 
Man, the EFF needs to do better, man. John, the, the state does not own or has it been expensive. We want to nationalize the, the nationalization of mines, banks, and other strategic sectors of the economy. So that is seriously critical because we live in the world where we don't the, the state does not own or south africans don't own their own minds and therefore a person comes from outside and they can do whatever they want they can mine they even don't even want to pay the taxes which they should be paying and that's where you get those elicitive flows that comes in into into play so we want to make sure that um, the nationalization of mine banks and other strategic uh, sectors of the economy are done are built building a state and governance capacity which will lead to the abolishment of the tenders. Um, we also want free quality education, healthcare, houses and sanitation for all. We want massive protected industrial development to create millions of sustainable jobs in this country. How do you create jobs? You create jobs firstly by making sure that you stabilize your issue of energy. Let's start there first. But, you, but why would people work? in this EFF utopia, because you can't own your house, you can't own things, you can't go anywhere. Why would you work? Why would anyone work? Garrett, everybody is going to work because why? everybody's going but to explain get a why. good job. What job? Is the state going to employ everybody? No, the state is not <laughs> going to employ everybody. So what, but, who would want to run, but, who, like, where would you borrow money to start your business in the EFF utopia if the bank belongs to the EFF or to the, the government? No, it, it doesn't. Be why would the government, the government doesn't lend people money. Okay. In any country. No, but it can. If we wanted to design it that way, what? it can. Where are you going to get taxes state... from if you take away people's businesses and houses and you take away the banks and you take away the mines? Where is tax money going to come from? Where is the government going Jeez. to be able to fund itself? No, we're not These taking like away people's questions. base. We're not taking away people's businesses. We're simply saying that we must have a state bank. We're not saying that other banks must no longer exist, but we're saying that no, we must No, you said you're going to take over the banks. We must you, have you didn't a say, state bank. No, you bank. said, I'm just going to quote you here, you said we will take over strategic things like the banks. Yes. So that means the other banks won't exist. The government will take over. They're allowed banks. to exist. No one is saying that... Why would they want to compete with a state bank when you'll give the state bank preferential regulatory capacities and, and the ability to make but its own But why rules. not? Because the state bank is actually going to assist our people. People will pay less in I mean, you guys... I, I also have a question around mm. our people, that particular phrase. Who is excluded from our people? When you say our people, who is excluded? The white monopoly capital. Who, uh, who is mm. that? What mm. is that? look like white monopoly capital is who the white monopoly capital is the people who are in charge of um, production in this country who are those people my people when I say our people Garrett is my people you are my people of course you are people <sighs> you don't own the means of production you are just a normal South African citizen who's making sure that but I own the means of production here oh Producing this podcast. No. <laughs> under your definition, you could take that away. No, you come could call on. me white. You could call me white. <laughs> yeah. No. It's a means of production, whether you like it or not. It's a means of production. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Garrett, no. You no? Don't, don't. So who is it? Just the very rich ones. Yes. Your okay, so. Oppenheimers. In your so it's a wealth grab. This yes. is just a wealth grab. This sounds like when a child sees another child has stuff and they just take it from them. But, Banks, but, but, mines, no. uh, property, no. businesses. Let, yeah, let's, that's what it sounds let's like. Let's be charitable to them uh, a little bit because I feel like <laughs> Gareth has um, strawmanned some of the well, arguments. Okay, then you, you help them. Go so, on. so I think the land conversation, just to go first to the, the question around who, what land reasonably do socialists speak about, right? You're talking about mining land. You're talking about um, farm, farm land, and in um, and agricultural holdings, right? And when you look at the land audit, what it showed there is that 97 percent of farms and agricultural holdings are owned by seven percent of as they would population. be in almost every country in the world. Sure. But when you then consider <coughs> the historical context, because farming of, is hard, by the way. I mean, that's why. That's why seven percent of the people have to farm the land to get the maximum production out of it, so we can eat. You know what? But okay. In a, in a general um, conversation about markets and free markets and social markets, etc., that premise would be, you know, debatable without adding additional context. But here, 
we have to remember that a lot of this farmland was dispossessed violently under a creation of a set of laws which discriminated on race. But you've got to prove that on a case by case basis. We can't. We so, can't. I mean, we can't make a generalization. Some people have paid in the last ten years for a farm. Holistically, and you're not wrong about that, which mm. is what makes uh, history uh, a, a complex uh, subject. Yeah. So we can't. We all blankets. living in a continuation of of a historical spectrum. You know, as much as you could have bought a, 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 a let's say a vineyard in, in, in Stellenbosch, legitimately. Most of those belong to foreigners. What would, you, what would you do about those? Those, those must be expropriated as well, right? But um, no, we, we, also, is, that, is that a thing? Foreigners can't own land, surely, under the EFFs? The land must be owned by the state. There we go. But, but you get what I'm saying, right? I'm not talking about some of the additional dynamics. I'm talking about when you look at the land um, ownership patterns in South Africa, they okay, would seem to most people but Jenny, to be you said unjust. I'm, you said I'm strawmanning her argument. She's just said again, and I'm going to take her at her word. I believe her. I take her seriously. She says all the land will belong to the state. So why are you arguing for something no, I'm, she I'm, didn't say I'm, she I'm, believes? I'm it? contextualizing what I think is the fair terrain are around. Are you mansplaining her? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I think, I, I think we, and I'm not talking for about me. the banks or whatever. I think no, the land it's, conversation. It's important. It's important to understand because as a... Um, a member of the working committee is it working committee or war room which one is it again war Please council. Me. War the council. war council right i think she she has a, a thorough grasp of what it is that the policy is and her argument is is that like this is exactly what i meant man i feel like they have like they can have someone like jamie right here they can have someone like jamie right here someone who can break the facts but this lady that they sent to this podcast she doesn't know what she's talking about and now they're bashing Jamie because, Jamie, why are you trying to explain things that this lady is supposed to know? She came to our podcast. You cannot come here and rescue the EFF. No, you cannot do that. Let the EFF speak for the EFF. Let the EFF speak for the EFF. This is why I said that the EFF can do better. I mean, I know they can do better. I know they have, they have people who are bright, who, who can explain these things. But when you send people like this lady to podcasts, the, the lady who doesn't even know what she's talking about, she's putting a bad name to the party, man. She's hurting the party right now. And Jamie's trying to rescue her, and they're saying, no, don't. This one comes from the EFF. Let her tell her. Let, let her tell us what the EFF thinks. You are not the member of the EFF. You are not there. We are not working with the EFF. So you cannot explain policies of the EFF to us. <laughs> Oh, that is what you is no, that this, what you are saying. This, what and I'm what you are saying is you you are then saying you feel the need man. to clarify. What no, she is no, no, no. I'm clarifying what I think Jer Gareth has done, which is so. I'm I'm Gareth explaining, if anything, <laughs> because Gareth said, "What is the land ownership pattern in South Africa?" And he said that the state owns most of the land. And, yeah, and what brought, I then you, say then is you that the land audit says yes, but you, that you, you uh, agricultural land agricultural is land. There is so much land in this country that is not agricultural land that's zoned for military, that's zoned for public works, that is now being incorporated into uh, townships and suburbs around Johannesburg and Pretoria and all these places that are growing. That is government land. It's obviously owned by the state. And if you do a proper land audit of all the all the land, not just the agricultural land, you'll see that that is, in fact, the, the, the case. When we're talking about land in the context of a South African political conversation, right, there are three types of land that you're talking about, right? It's Some land is not... Is not um, arable. Arable, and it's not... We're, we're uh, talking about that. Right? We're talking about all land. Dogaza said all land, so I don't know why we're breaking it down I'm, for... I'm, I'm, I just thought it was a little bit of a straw man. Not at all. Because it's I, mining I, I land... I think I've been clear. I, farming both land... Both Dogaza and I are quite clear. Like, we mean all land, right? We mean all land, you and I, in this discussion. There we go. But your focus of the conversation... I told you, I told you you'd yeah, find no, it funny how much man. I agree with the EFF. This is the straw man. <laughs> the straw man I'm pointing out is some of your arguments about residential land, like your house, right, doesn't necessarily apply to um, farmland, which was... Um, but you're complicating a quite simple issue. She said all land. So I now, think there's a straw so, man so somewhere. Put, okay, but, but then put me, let's go back to a question. Three things. So the first one was the land. The second one was the strategic resources and minerals in the bank, nationalize all of that stuff. And the third and one the third was? The third one is 
building state and government capacity, okay. which lead, which will lead to the abolishment of tenders. Now, no one would be against that. Yeah. But that isn't number one, yeah. that's number three. <laughs> when people have researched, and Jamie can back me up on this, because he, I know you, you look at these surveys and you take them seriously and you probably interpret them with more time and effort than I do, so I'm willing to be corrected, but the land does not come up as a priority for the majority of South Africans. Well, you know what? It's not even in the top 10, as far as I've seen. What, what, I've, what I've come to find is that there's a bit of a disconnect, right, uh, between some of the official polling data and some of the discourse on the ground. So when I look at the, the polls, right, Ipsos, uh, Social Research Foundation, several others, land doesn't show up. Yeah. But oftentimes, um, when I'm in either I'm social listening or um, I've just been living life, brides, et cetera, et cetera, in black communities, that is something that I often hear about a lot. For instance, at, the, at, at my university where I studied, that was a big uh, talking point amongst the students. And that may be a generational thing. Yeah. But I've often found that there's a bit of a disconnect between um, what I hear on the ground but, but, sometimes and what the polling indicates. And as we know, I mean, from I mean, American and European elections, uh, polling isn't always accurate, especially absolutely. when you're Couldn't polling people. But then let's, let's be careful not to say like among black people, because again, there's huge differences between ex people like MPs or, or cabinet ministers when they have a bribe. They're not talking of about course, anything and, but themselves. And, and, and I and, can't give you outside of that. No, um, of course. But I mean, when you say you, you certainly can't say like black people think X or Y, which would be hugely insulting. And we don't have to go down that. Uh -uh. You, it depends. So, so um, you're, you're saying that maybe these polls are skewed and that they don't know black yeah, people. I'm saying that <laughs> there are two types of generalizations. Yeah. One is a hasty generalization, one that is not founded on any scientific basis whatsoever. And then there's a statistical generalization, which can be founded on proper research, uh, sure. listening, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm saying to you is I've tried to reconcile the gap between okay. um, and what, have you what found? the polling has indicated and what um, you know the, the land discourse sometimes is on social media platforms, etc. And you think it's probably more important than those surveys show? Yes. Okay. So I think that in, right. in the Fair dispossessed enough. communities where people don't have land well, that would or be, ownership of land, that which would are be predominantly great. black, <coughs> it is a bigger issue uh, than, for instance, the DA would think it so is. So then that would be great news for the EFF. I think that's that why mean, they have 10%. That would mean that they have their finger on the pulse of what most people in this country are actually concerned with. And maybe their three priorities are the three priorities. What do you say, Pumi? We have seven, actually. Seven? Oh, there's some more. Yeah. Okay, so after number three, which is like... We build. have free quality education, healthcare, houses, and sanitation. Who's paying for that? Because we can't even get the NIH off the ground. I mean, none of our government hospitals work. You see, the problem is... I mean, I'm just taking health. Again, no, no, you so, are looking at the eye of the country, which is run and, by the ANC. I understand. But where would the EFF do better? How would you do better? Would you? How would you appoint people like in a better way than the ANC have. Okay. They would be cadres, but they would be EFF cadres. How, how would it work? You know what we, okay. You know, cadre deployment in the EFF is actually not one of our things. We, we, we actually deploy people on basis of their strength. If tomorrow there is a skill that we do not have in-house, we'll go and fetch somebody. It doesn't mean that because you must be a member of the... Where would you get doctors and nurses and hospital managers? Because those people aren't going to hang around if you take away their property. Oh, my God, Garrett, stop thinking about your house. No, I'm not thinking about as my house. <laughs> but, 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 as okay, so this explaining is... to you, you are looking most at people... this in a very small scale okay, of so, way of so most looking people, at things. Most people look at their budget every month. Yes. I mean, we're all normal people. None of us are supremely rich. None of us are supremely poor. We, we all managing to eke out a living, right? And I take you as an MP. You're not on a huge salary. People always say MPs earn this we huge amount of money. You don't, right? But all of us, we think about how much we have to spend every month. We think about what our priorities are. Having a roof over your head is a pretty, pretty big priority yes. for most people. And I'm not simplifying this. I don't think I'm being unkind or straw manning here. Well, you know, you know what I mean, these are things that most people think about. You need transport, you need accommodation, you need food. After that, all the other stuff you can start figuring out. Am I right? So, look, I don't support uh, land expropriation without compensation, right? Because I think um, at the private property level of the house ownership, you have some issues. But I do think that there's a conversation that is important to have about land injustice in South Africa, because it's, it's, it seems to me um, cruel to insist on the current land ownership patterns 
when you have is this you know, because you think it's it's unequal and unfair I, I think first and foremost the way everyone got to most of their addresses is based on history not necessarily just mere merit you know if you um but that's had, true for everything true for how you get to school it's how you get to your job exactly but, but it's how but, you get health care it's how exactly. you get everything so it's not this is not a pure meritocratic outcome is sure, what i'm saying not. 2023 is not a result of people who just started off from a of even not. starting point but if 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 the eff had their way and the state redistributed all of that and changed started history again you know like they did in stalinist russia would that be the same well, this is so. I'm not. I'm not going to make their point for them, right? That's why I'm saying that when I look at the um, land distribution patterns in South Africa, mm. there is a massive injustice and cruelty there. Right? To and to insist like, upon cruelty it, is a is a is a hell of a word. Explain that. It's it's cruel for people who own a lot of land and have lived affluent lives, and some of that land ownership, especially if you look at. Um, you said seven percent. So seven yeah, percent yeah. of the people in this country are cruel. No, what I'm saying is insisting on the the status quo which is to say hey l let's say for example someone lives in 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 houghton or whatever and they say well i, I i'm in houghton i'm comfortable here you must continue to be comfortable in alex and we don't have to have a conversation about the i don't think anyone think do you I find me a person who would say that publicly so when when who people, would say that when, when what kind <laughs> of person would go around going no no it's absolutely fine that there are people who live in absolute poverty there's so, no one in any of the parties that i could think of would can you Dogozo? is there anyone in the eff the da the anc would go yeah, it's fine for those poor people. So we all agree that land land needs uh, to be uh, the land the land question needs to be resolved one way or another. But the one thing I don't understand about this whole thing is that if right now the government owns a lot of land, why are they not distributing the land? If they own the land right now, why are they not distributing the land? I don't understand that part. Right. Uh, in terms of the conversation we have no, outside of the nationalization one. Mm -hmm. So in this room, we agree. Then the question then becomes, what then do you do? Because when it gets personal, right, when you then say, let's put affordable housing in uh, C point, then people say, well, I don't want affordable housing in my neighborhood because that's going to depreciate the value of my property. Mm -hmm. but then that's when you start to hear the. The, the little cruelty there because okay, it's not cruelty that's just you don't you but, want to but live, then what do I we mean, do why do why we do? Why, are, why are black people moving into suburbs that were 80 percent white and and they're happy to do so by their own free will you can't say that those people are making decisions about uh property values and being cruel they want their kids to grow up in a nice neighborhood so at an at a individual level your argument is solid no question about it. Everyone wants to But you to must look at everything best. on an individual level. You, not, no. That's you, make, that's none, you and Pumi and I are making policy. Dogozo is, and she told us her policy. I, I would disagree with somebody who makes that liberal argument that everything needs to be looked at at an individual level because some things are social and some things are community-based, right? And if you only look at your safety in your neighborhood as Gareth, you may not live in a very safe neighborhood because sometimes you have to collaborate on safety and that's why we have all of these safety companies and interventions and gated communities and more et secure private security than we have police but i i think that we we are currently stuck in a quagmire around this issue of land and what the meanings of all of those things are and i think we're missing the opportunity with having dogs over here of, of really digging deep into the mind of this organization and understanding. And, and I suppose, Dogazo, and this is why for me, I keep asking the question to say, explain it to me <coughs> until I understand it, um, as if you were talking to an 18-year-old. And the reason I make that particular request is because if you think about who the voters are, these are the people who are supposed to give you the mandate. But if you are not able to engage them and explain to them, then that's why they don't show up to vote. Guys, what are your thoughts, man? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this whole thing? Do you think that the Ntokozo represented the EFF well, or you think that she has done a terrible job? And what are your thoughts on land expropriation without compensation, man? Do you think that... 
it is going to benefit South Africans or do you think that it is going to hurt South Africans? So guys, please tell me what you think on the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button and the most important part, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabal, so I will see you next time. Bye-bye.